What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris. And I'm Patrick Hall. And today we're going to show you four easy ways that you can shoot the wedding rings at each of your weddings. For this first shot, we're going to start as simply as we possibly can. And one thing that you're going to find at every single wedding that you shoot are of course flowers. I'm going to take the engagement ring and place it in one of these flowers here. And I'm going to be shooting this with a macro lens. You're definitely gonna want a macro lens when you're shooting rings, just because a normal lens is not going to be able to focus close enough. Obviously you could step back and crop in a lot, but you're going to have to crop in so much, you're going to lose all of your resolution. Now, when you're working with macro lenses, you're going to be dealing with insanely shallow depth of field, and you're gonna to wanna to really stop down your aperture so that you have enough depth of field to work with. I'm gonna be taking this picture at F32, which means I need a lot of light, so I'm going to have to strobe this. I'm going to be using uh, this extra SB800 that I have here, and to trigger it, I'm just going to be using the pop-up flash. I'm going to set this to one over 128th in manual mode, which is the lowest power setting that can be on. And then I'm going to set my SB800 to optical slave mode so that when it sees this flash, it's going to fire as well. For this first test shot here, I'm going to be shooting at F32, one 200th of a second at ISO 100. As you can see, the shot looks decent but the shadows are a bit harsh. You can see those lines being cast by each of the petals of the flower, and I think we can soften it up a little bit. If you don't happen to own any sort of flash modifier, you can use anything that happens to be around you. In this case, we're gonna be using a paper towel. I've used plates before at weddings. I've used the napkins, the fabric napkins that are placed around at weddings. Anything that's white that we can bounce light off of to make a larger light source will work. Now. I obviously can't take the picture and hold this and hold the light at the same time, so I'm going to get Patrick over here to help me do this. Now, the goal of any picture like this, especially at a wedding, is to capture it as quickly as possible. And I don't have an hour of time to place the lights exactly where they need to be. So what I'm going to do is get a basic exposure with what I think is correct with this flash bouncing into the paper towel. And then once we get that locked in, Patrick is just going to move around. I'm not even going to be looking at the pictures that I'm taking, but I'm probably gonna take 10 or 15 different pictures and he's going to move the light for every single one. We're gonna have a lot of variety to choose from, but hopefully one of those shots will be the best. Let's do it. You'll notice that for some of these shots, Patrick is bouncing. Some of the shots he's actually shooting through. But basically his goal is to get a variety of different lighting styles so that we can choose our favorite once we actually get back to the computer. So as you can see, a lot of these shots look pretty good, but if we go through them, I can easily pick out my favorite shot. This is the one that I wanna take into Photoshop, retouch and deliver to the client. For this next shot, we're gonna make it a little more complex. We're not even gonna use an assistant and I'm gonna use one of my favorite little tools, a spritz bottle. So the basic concept for this shot is to have some moody image of the rings with a backlight and to have the water coming out of the spritz bottle add a lot of atmosphere. Since I'm gonna be doing this entire shot by myself, I've put the camera on a tripod so that I can lock the composition down and I have added a pocket wizard. Now this pocket wizard is going to fire this remote flash that I'm gonna put behind my rings to give a rim light. For the backlight flash, I have this set to about 1 8th power and I'm using the MagMod system here. I'm using a grid so that the light only hits the rings and doesn't spill all over the place. And I am using some purple gels to give a little bit of mood and color. You can make these any color you want to kind of go with the wedding. I thought purple would be really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this flash right behind the rings. So I'm ready to take my first test shot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into live view. I'm gonna use live view so I can get a really perfect focus. I have this set to F8, which is actually a little more shallow of a depth of field, but because I'm on a tripod, it's gonna work out really well. And let's take our first test shot here. So as you can see from this first shot, my backlight is just skirting across the background and adding a little bit of mood. So now we obviously need to light the front of the ring. And because I'm working by myself, I don't have an assistant to hold up a paper towel. What I'm gonna use instead is the F-Stoppers flash disc, and this is a collapsible light modifier that fits on top of your flash that works very similarly to the method we just did with Lee. Now for this key light, I'm gonna put this flash into an optical mode. It needs to see the backlight to fire, but this allows me to make this shot with only one set of pocket wizards. So I'm just gonna take a couple test shots here and figure out exactly where I want the flash. 
and something like that looks really cool. I now have the ring lit properly and I have the cool purple light spilling from the background. So now that we have our rings positioned and lit, it's time to add the really cool element, which is going to be the spritz bottle. Since both of my hands are gonna be preoccupied trying to light the rings and spray water behind the rings, I have to set my camera into self timer mode. And with this camera, I have a two second timer delay so that I can get in position. So let's see if we can get one of these shots first try. One thing you're really gonna to wanna to do for this shot is to spray a bunch before you take the picture so that you have a ton of mist in the air when the flash fires. So as you can see from this final photograph, this is a really dramatic image that your clients are bound to love. And I have no doubt that you can reproduce this at your own weddings. Now for this next shot, I'm going to abandon the flash altogether. And I'm gonna show you how you can use an LED light to light paint a scene and come up with great photos on the fly. This particular LED light that I have, it's I think like 30 or $40, I got it on Amazon, and it allows you to change the power intensity, which is really handy when you're doing a bunch of light painting. Now, many times at wedding receptions, you're gonna be scouring the area to find some interesting things to put the rings on. And most of the time I would suggest using something at the wedding, but if you don't have anything at the wedding that's interesting, I would recommend building a small little kit of interesting backgrounds. In this kit, I have different glossy sheets of plastic and different reflective pieces that I can put underneath the ring. In this particular kit, I found at Walmart, it's a bunch of sleeves of different types of aluminum foil that look really interesting when you put the rings on. So that's what I'm gonna use for this next shot. Another cheap item that I carry with me are these little beads. This is just a bracelet that I got at Walmart. And what you can do with this is put it in the background, light paint it. And because these will be so out of focus, you can get some really interesting effects. Now for this photograph, I'm also going to switch systems and use the Canon 60 with the 100 millimeter macro. This allows me just to get a little bit further away from the ring and still retain that sharp macro look. Now, since I'm going to be light painting the ring and light painting our background separately, I'm going to have to choose a relatively long shutter speed so that I can do all of this in one single image. For this photo, I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna be around eight seconds. I'm gonna be shooting at a pretty shallow depth of field. I'm gonna shoot at F4, and I'm going to have my ISO cranked really low so that the ambient light in the reception hall doesn't affect my photograph. So with my self timer activated, let's give this a shot. Now the biggest challenge you're gonna have with this photograph is figuring out the perfect balance between lighting the ring and then moving and lighting the background so that you get a correct exposure. With a few little test shots, I think you'll be able to find the perfect balance and come out with a couple really cool images that look unlike anything else that you would normally take at the wedding. For this final shot, we're going to totally change things up. I have a totally different ring here, and instead of shooting towards the diamond itself, we're going to be shooting a profile shot of the ring to show its interesting shape. For the background of this shot, I'm actually going to be using this laptop screen, and I'm going to be swapping out pictures to completely change the look and vibe of the image. This is something that could turn out to be really, really cheesy if you don't use restraint, but if you do, you can create really cool looking images very, very quickly, and nobody will ever be able to know that it was actually a screen behind the ring. What I'm going to do first is just open up this laptop here, and then to get this ring up high enough so that it's not showing the bottom of the computer monitor, I'm just gonna use this board here. I'm gonna lay it across the keyboard. To get this ring to stand up straight, I'm just going to use this piece of putty here. I'm gonna form it into a ball, stick it to the wood, and then stick the ring on the top of the putty. Very, very simple. Because we're not going to be using strobe light for the shot, I am going to need to use a tripod. So let me set that up. Basically, I wanna raise this camera so that it's perfectly even with the height of the ring. I'm going to be able to see the putty in the shot, but that's okay. I can crop in later or Photoshop that out if I decide to. The first thing I'm going to do is set my f-stop. For this shot, I'm going to be around 5.6. Then I can mess with my shutter speed to get a decent exposure on the background. Obviously, the ring itself is going to be dark right now, but that's okay. I'm going to be shooting around f5.6, 1 60th of a second at ISO 640. That should give me enough light to play with. 
For this shot, I have a range of different images that I've picked out for my background. Here's a daylight shot, here's a sunset shot, I have some stars, here's a rusty background. It really doesn't matter because the background's going to go so blurry that you're not really going to be able to determine what it is at all. You're basically just going for colors and the overall mood of the image. So let's start with this cloud shot. And we'll take our first image here. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad right now. Obviously the ring is a bit dark, but that's kind of a cool mood. You get that silhouette of the ring. If you wanna add a little bit of light to the ring, a flash isn't gonna work because it's going to fire light all over the place. You're probably going to get a reflection in the screen itself. I'm going to use this little LED flashlight that I have here. And this is cool because it can actually shine in multiple ways. If you turn it on once, uh, it'll, it'll make a pin light here. This is actually what I'm going to use. But then if you click it again, you can use this array of LEDs. And this is really good for lighting bigger scenes as well. But for this shot, I'm just going to use the very first setting, which is a pin light. I'm going to hold this right above the uh, ring here. And let's take a shot and see what it looks like. I think this looks great. So now let's go through the different backgrounds that we have and see what different images we can come up with. As you can see, by quickly swapping out the background, you're going to be able to completely change the look of your images. If you wanna show the entire ring, you can easily Photoshop the putty out if you want, and it'll actually be much easier for you if you have a standard round ring than I did with this unique style. So that's it guys, four easy and completely different ways to photograph wedding rings at each and every one of your weddings that you photograph. If you'd like to learn more about how we photograph our weddings, I would highly suggest checking out our wedding photography tutorial titled How to Become a Professional Commercial Wedding Photographer. It's 14 hours long and covers everything that we know about wedding photography. You can find the link to that in this post below.